Hi, this is Paul Acevedo of Windows Phone Central. Here with a video look at MU7800 for Windows Phone 8 and technically Windows 8, but we're just looking at the phone version today. This is an Atari 2600 and 7800 emulator. These are two consoles from the early 80s. I owned both of them at one time or another. Um, you can tell from this screen here that it has a much different interface from other emulators we've seen. There's an about screen that tells you a little bit about um, using the emulator. Then you push play Atari today to start using it. Then the menus are all vertically oriented, as you can see. Uh, here's what is very different with this and other emulators, though, is that it has a ton of games included by default. These are commercial games, which, as far as I know, is are illegal to include with an emulator. So don't be surprised if at some point the simulator has to leave the store and come back with all the ROMs removed. Um, but there are quite a few 2600 and 7800 games present. Notably absent from both lists are uh, is Double Dragon for the 2600 or 7800. Big disappointment for me. Uh, you can also sort them by Publishers, Atari, and iMagic. Then Other, and uh, Other is mostly homebrew games. Curiously and annoyingly, there is no importing of ROMs. So if you uh, ripped your own ROM and wanted to play it because it was not included, like Double Dragon, there's no way to do that at present. Hopefully that will be added in a future update. I mean, it's really weird. Importing ROMs is the main way to get ROMs legally in an emulator for phones, and yet that feature isn't here and the games are bundled. Uh, but putting that aside, let's look at how it handles a nice little 2600 game. The original Pac-Man, which was actually a pretty disappointing game at the time. Now here's another little um, thing that the menus do not support, you know, horizontal viewing, and yet you do have to turn the phone this way to actually play, which is kind of weird. Press the back button and you can access the Atari system's hardware buttons, basically. There's a power color toggle between that and black and white. Um, you can switch between player one and two controllers. Select and reset. Turning power off actually does that for some reason. Like, I don't know really why you would emulate that function, but whatever. You can also just turn the sound off. That's pretty handy built-in pause. That's switching between the two controllers. Um, so, unlike other emulators, there are no on-screen virtual controls, um, and figuring out what to do can be a little hard. So, Pac-Man on the Atari 2600 was not much of a looker. It was did not really take advantage of the system's meager power. I mean, it's kind of like Pac-Man, but the characters don't look right, the layout is nothing like the real layout. So, you can see why it wasn't everybody's favorite game. To switch games, there's no built-in menu function to switch games, you just have to push back again after bringing up the menu. The 7800 was a much more powerful system, so let's see how Donkey Kong Jr. ran on that. You can make a few menu options, again, with, you know, an invisible virtual stick. These two systems, they only had one action button to worry about, so I guess that's why tapping in the lower right corner of the screen is good enough without actually being able to see the button. So this is a pretty good approximation of Donkey Kong Jr. It doesn't really look exactly the same because the graphics capabilities aren't there. But the level layout is right, and there's Mario up at the top, one of his few turns as a villain. So even if Atari 2600 games are a little too simple for you, then you might find something to like with the 7800 games. Then also let's look at a homebrew game real quick. Uh, Junior Pac-Man right there, and Pac-Man Collection. Pac-Man Collection is pretty interesting. 
you can see it goes through these kind of menu screens. I mean, the attract screens that were completely missing in the original Pac-Man and, you know, are part of the arcade experience. Now, that actually looks like Pac-Man. And uh, it also has options to play as uh, Miss Pac-Man and some other games. In short, the simulator has a little ways to go. It, uh, I would like to actually have some visible on-screen controls, at least as an option. And uh, the ROMs probably need to be removed, the ones that aren't homebrew, or at least the ones... I mean, even some homebrew games, they're not meant to be just distributed without paying for them. But it, the simulator does have one big feather in its cap, and that's MOGA controller support. I don't have a MOGA Pro controller on hand to test it with, but if you own one, then at least you've got another game to play with it. Thanks for watching. Read our full article at WPCentral.com.